Good evening, beautiful people. Happy Sunday. Come on into the room. My name is Julia Spence, and I'm a certified life coach coming to you live from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And I wanted to share with you some insight. <coughs> Pardon me. A friend of mine wrote a post today and it really challenged me it challenged me to begin to pray hi Deborah thanks for joining the broadcast hope you and yours are well tonight's topic is gonna be I'm not gonna be here with you long tonight but I wanted to share the insight that the Lord gave me as I chatted with a friend today and here's what my friend wrote this is the end of her post she wrote a long post but she wrote the end of the post she said Jesus is coming soon marriage represents Christ there is a move in the earth to heal covenant marriages because God is restoring his glory the image of him and his bride it is bigger than us God is making the body rapture ready. And when she said this, the Holy Spirit said to me, the remnants are coming out of the cave, coming out of caves. And I'm not, I'm sure those of you who are followers of Jesus Christ, good night, Jackie. Thanks for joining the broadcast. Hope you and your family are well. I am sure you have heard the re about the remnant. There's always a remnant left in the earth. But what the Holy Spirit showed me today is that there are remnants in different spheres of influence. So there's not just a remnant in the body in general, but there are remnants in different spheres of influence. So come and go with me to 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 1 to 4, and then we're going to jump down to 1 Kings 18, 22. And this is what the word of the Lord says in 1 Kings 18, 1 to 4. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, shew thyself unto Ahab. Glad to hear that. Thanks, Cousin Arlene. Thanks for joining the broadcast. We're in 1 Kings 18, 1 to 14, 1 to 4, pardon me. And it says, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain unto the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab. And there was a sore famine in Samaria. So there was a famine in the land. So I want you to put a pin there. What famine is going on in your land, in your family at this time? Famine could be a famine of marriages where people are faithful. Famine could be a famine of more than enough finances, lack of finances, poor relationships. What is the famine that's going on in your land? And I'm going to show you how God is calling you to deal with that famine. Just like he called the prophets in the time with Elijah. Elijah thought he was the only one. And some of you in your own family, in your sphere of influence, you think that you are the only one that see things a particular way. But I want to encourage you tonight that there's more that see things your way the way God intended than you could ever imagine. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. So you may have a particular perspective on a matter and there are other people around you that don't seem to get it you're the weird one in your family you're the weird one in your company you're the weird one in your dance group you you have some insight and revelation that people don't quite get but I want to assure you again that there are others out there that see things the new insight the new revelation that God wants to share with humanity Let's jump down now to 1 Kings 18 and 22. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. 
but Baal prophets are 450 men so here's Elijah and I'm sure some of you feel like Elijah like you know Lord I'm the only one that is functioning this way in my assembly in my family in my business you know and it is challenging but as we saw back in in first Kings 18 1 to 4 that God has some prophets hidden in a cave, some people hidden in different spheres of influence that he is going to unveil to you. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. And now we're going to jump down to 1 Kings 19 and verse 10. And he said, I have been very jealous of the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down their, thine altars, and slain the prophets with the sword. And I, even only, I, pardon me, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So here's Elijah feeling all discouraged because he's the only one left behind. But as I shared with you before, we had Obadiah who saved some prophets. So what is the famine in your land? Is it family matters? Is it walking in holiness? Is it doing business with godly principles? Thanks for joining the broadcast, Madonna and Jennifer. We're talking about the remnants are coming out of the cave. And I'm going to share personal experience with you guys. I, those of you that know me well know that I love to pray. People that know that I love to pray, send me messages and say, Julia, this is happening, X, Y, Z is happening. Can you pray with me? Can you pray for me? So in some circles, people saw me as weird like years ago, maybe even now that I don't know about. They thought they treated me as though I was weird because I love to pray. But in this season, God is showing me and connecting me with people that love to pray. So he is bringing the remnant out of the caves he is bringing people that are like-minded in the things of God together so that his kingdom can come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven so they are more of you than you realize so he has shown me that the remnant thank you for joining Chris White Ugh, I can't say that clearly Chris White my brother from New Zealand the remnants are coming out of the cave. He showed me that there are remnants standing for marriage, covenant marriage. You may be married and your spouse is separated from you and people around you may be telling you, forget about him or forget about her. You know, move on. Why don't you move on? Forget about it. But do you know, within the last few months, I have discovered that there are people standing for their spouses. They're spending the time in praying. Thank you for joining Lady Thomas. Hi Angie. Thank you for joining. There are people standing in the gap even though their spouses may have moved out of their homes and may even be involved in dating other people. There are people out there standing for marriage and trusting God because God is the one that created marriage. So there are people standing for covenant marriage. It sounds crazy because people say, you know, your spouse has moved on. Why don't you go start dating? But let me tell you something. If you're married married, and you're dating, you're out of order. You are having an affair. That is not of God. So God has raised up people to say, you know what? I believe in the covenant. And Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12 tells us that a three-pronged cord is not easily broken. So that's the husband, the wife, and God involved. So when a spouse is standing with God and praying for the restoration of their marriage, for the restoration of their home, for that, for that kind of separation and divorce to leave their bloodline, God has people out there standing for that. God also has people standing for holiness. There are women that are keeping their bodies holy, that are not running around and sleeping around with men, they understand that God does not like fornication and therefore they are living holy before God. Not from a judgmental place, but that is just the stance, the conviction that God has put in their lives and they're living holy. God showed me again by his spirit that people are standing for godly principles. I have a friend who is on Facebook. She has a marketplace ministry and she is working with 
uh, Christian entrepreneurs who want to use godly principles in their businesses so that God's kingdom can come in the earth as he's ordained it in heaven concerning their businesses. They're using godly principles to run their business. God has shown me, just like it with, the, with the prophet Elijah here, where he thought he was alone, God is raising up prophets and prophetesses that are not prostituting the gospel. They're not begging people for money to give them a prophetic word because there are people out there doing that. But God is raising up people that will prophesy God's truth. God is raising up intercessors. As I mentioned, I love to pray. And so God has connected me with intercessors that some of that are higher level than me so that I could learn from them, glean from them and increase in intercession and warfare. So God is raising up intercessors that are standing and interceding on behalf of nations, on behalf of families, on behalf of whatever God puts in them. What are you standing for? What is God calling you to stand for? People are standing and interceding on behalf of government. People that are believers in Jesus Christ are actually getting involved in government and they are looking to institute godly principles into government. People are standing for government using godly principles. People are standing in arts and entertainment. They're creating movies where there's not all of this perversion. There's not all of this cussing. People are standing in arts and entertainment. So my challenge to you tonight, <coughs> pardon me, just going to grab some water because my throat is kind of itchy. What area is God calling you to stand? Is he calling you to stand in the area of psychology? Are you a psychologist? Are you a nurse? Are you a doctor? Are you a person that works in mental health? What is God calling you to stand on? He says the remnant is coming. The remnant is coming or are coming out of the caves because there's more than one. So I want to challenge you to get back to the Bible. In your sphere of influence, get back to seeking God, get back to prayer, get back to reading your word so that you can hear what God wants you to do in the earth realm so that his kingdom can come and his will be done. So be encouraged tonight, those of you who are standing for marriage, those of you who are standing for holiness, those of you who are standing for godly principles in your business, those of you who are standing as prophets and declaring the word of God, bringing solutions to the earth realm, those of you who are standing as intercessors, as wall watchers, petitioning God so that his will can come in the earth, those of you who are standing in education, pardon me, if you are a teacher, uh, an instructor, a facilitator of sorts, and you are seeking God to find out what the audience requires, what does he want the audience to learn? If you are a teacher, even in, in ministry in churches, are you seeking God to hear what, re what relevant word God wants you to bring into the earth at this time? Are you standing on his principles and delivering the messages and, and bringing the revelation and insight that God wants you to. Are you an apostle? Are you standing on God's word and bringing the blueprints that God wants in the earth for, for his bride at this time? Are you a pastor? Are you hearing from heaven what needs to be in place for your sheep? Are you standing on God's word and that I believe that's what standing is standing is even though the world system is operating alternative and contrary to what God says God is looking for a remnant who will stand on his word and let his kingdom come and let his will be done on earth as he ordains in heaven hi Keva thanks for joining from the time we were little kids we prayed the Lord's Prayer we were taught the Lord's Prayer. I grew up in the Caribbean, in Barbados to be exact. We were taught the Lord's Prayer in Sunday school. We were taught the Lord's Prayer in schools because we had religious studies in Barbados. I don't know if they still have religious studies in Barbados. Those of you that are on from Barbados, you can let me know. But we had to learn the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come. And your will be done. But how can his kingdom come if his people are not seeking him for 
what is in his kingdom to come from earth, from heaven, down to earth. He needs us to stand on his principles, on his word, on his way of life, on his kingdom operation, so that we can bring that into the earth realm. So that's how we stand. The Lord's Prayer said, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven and as believers in Jesus Christ. In order for his kingdom to come, we have to stand on his word. We have to know his word. Hi, cuz. Thanks for joining the broadcast. We have to know his word. We have to live his word. We have to eat his word. We have to breathe his word in every situation and circumstance. You know, I live in Canada and sometimes people in Canada don't like to share their religious beliefs. And that is okay. I respect people that don't like to share theirs. But if someone comes to me and talks to me about God, I will share about God. Right? So I am standing on his word and letting his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven in that person's particular situation. Yes, in the workplace, you don't have to, uh, you know, make it a pulpit. But how you live your life will demonstrate if God's kingdom is coming through you or not. When people see that you're not gossiping, when people see that you're not backbiting, when people know that you're separated from your husband or from your wife and you're not dating, you're not having extra, mar you're not having marital affairs, those types of things, that is how we bring God's kingdom in the earth realm. We give God legal right and legal access to come in when we stand and live by his principles. That's how we establish an altar for heaven to come. Thanks for joining, Lisa. That's how we establish an altar for heaven to come in our lives and through our lives because God needs vessels to work with. Just like Satan needs vessels to work with, God needs vessels. So when we, Scripture tells us that in order for us, for the devil to flee, we have to submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. So he can only flee from us when we submit to God. So that's why God is looking for standards. He is looking for the remnant. Thanks for joining the broadcast, sis. He is looking for the remnant who will stand for righteousness and holiness, who will allow themselves to be vessels for his kingdom to flow through them on earth as it is in heaven. So that's all I have for you tonight, guys. It's a very short broadcast, but know that if you are a part of the remnant, whether it be in healthcare, whether it be in, in arts and entertainment, whether it be in government, whether it be in business, wherever God has called you to stand, stand on his word, demonstrate his kingdom in the earth, befriend the Holy Spirit, listen to what the spirit of the Lord is sharing. Thank you so much for sharing the broadcast, Lisa. I didn't even tell anybody to share. I totally forgot about that. I just wanted to come on and bring on the word that the Lord has put in my heart that the remnants are coming out of the cave. He is bringing those that he has been pruning and shaping and preparing for such a time as this, because this is the end time. As I said, my friend read this she wrote a post this morning, and this was the end part, and I asked her permission to share. And she said, Jesus is coming soon. She was talking about marriage, but it is, it is so relevant to every area of our lives. Jesus is coming soon. Marriage represents Christ. There is a move in the earth to heal covenant marriages because God is restoring his glory. His glory is the image of him and his bride. It is bigger than us. God is making the body rapture ready. That's why God has so many teachers being raised up in intercession, in warfare, in, in the apostolic movement, in, 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 in being a prophet, in, in being a pastor. There's so much teaching going on in the earth realm. Not only in the spiritual realm or spiritual area, but throughout the earth. I've never seen so many co life coaches. I've never seen so many facilitators on the planet. People are recognizing that they have giftings and they are using them in order to generate income. Ours is to generate income too, but ours is to advance. Our main purpose for the gifts that God has given us is to advance the kingdom in whatever area he has called us to advance the kingdom. So Jesus is coming soon. 
he is making the body rapture ready. So whatever area God has called you to stand, even though you may think that you're the only one, just like Elijah thought he was the only prophet left, but Obadiah had saved some prophets and put them in the cave at the time. This was uh, coming from 1 Kings 18 and 1 Kings 19. That's what we read. So you uh, go back to the beginning of the broadcast to be able to see it. But God is making us rapture ready. So I want you to shift your focus, your gaze, no matter what you're going through today. Shift your focus, your gaze on Christ. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth in every area. I don't know what you're facing tonight. So Lord, I'm just going to pray. Father, I thank you for everyone watching this broadcast and everyone that will watch the replay. Lord, I ask you that those that are standing on your truth, standing on your word in their area of influence, Lord, that you would help them to know that they're not alone. You will help them to know that you are preparing them for greater. As my friend said, it's not about us. It is about what God wants done in the earth realm today, that you would encourage them, Lord God. You would give them hope, Lord God, to press through, even though what they you want them to produce in the earth realm may never have been done before. Um, people may say, you know, what are you doing? That's not how you do it. But that they would be encouraged, Lord God, to listen to your Holy Spirit and hear how he wants things to manifest on earth as it is in heaven. So I give you thanks and I give you praise for everyone watching this broadcast and those that will watch the replay that they will be encouraged tonight knowing that they're not the only ones standing. There are more standing on God's principles than you can ever imagine in every sphere of influence. As I said, the Holy Spirit showed me that the remnant is not just a collective people in the body, but the remnant is actually coming out of different spheres of influence. You know, Elijah thought he was the only one. But God has reserved a remnant, just like he reserved a remnant here when Jezebel was killing off the prophets, the prophets of God, and establishing her prophets. Because Elijah said, I'm the only one, but there are 400 of Baal's prophets. But there was actually 101 prophets of God that were spared, right? Were spared from, from death. So you be encouraged tonight. That's really what God wants to say to all of us, be encouraged. People may have mocked you and, and you know, think that you're weird, etc. But you be encouraged tonight. God is for you. He's not against you. Continue to listen to the Holy Spirit. Continue to get into the Word of God so you know God's principles. Continue to spend time in prayer so you can hear strategies of heaven. Prayer unlocks the strategies of heaven. Prayer unlocks unlocks the strategies of heaven so i will leave you with that tonight you guys be blessed as you face the week know that they're more for you than against you my son was having a con my son isaiah was having a conversation with me and he said mom how many angels left and, and uh, went with satan i said there there was one third left heaven and went. we had a conversation about the fall satan falling from heaven and I said there are two-thirds left. So there are more on God's side than there are on the enemy's side. And whenever you feel alone, know that God himself with you is for you. Exactly, Brother Chris. Prayer unlocks the strategies of heaven. So be blessed in your business, be blessed in your schools, be blessed in your, your places of influence this week, be blessed in your family. May heaven's agenda come on earth on your behalf this week in a new and mighty way. May there be an unlocking of heaven's strategies as you begin to pray. May you hear heaven's agenda and allow it to come on earth in you and through you be God's vessel this week, knowing that there are more for you than against you. God himself is greater with you. Okay? Bless you guys. Thanks for joining the broadcast. Have yourselves a fantastic week. Until we meet again. Again, my name is Julia Spence. I'm a certified life coach. Coming to you live from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I founded a company called Liberty Life Coaching Solutions. And this is our Sunday night encouragement for you. 
there's more for you. The remnants are coming out of the caves. You are gonna, God is gonna cause you to lock shields with people of like influence and like thinking so that his kingdom can come in the earth through you. In Jesus' name. Bless you guys. Thanks for watching the broadcast. Bye now.